In this lecture, I will discuss T cell mediated immunity. But first, I'm going to discuss how the T cells uh, differentiate. So, this one is uh, dendritic cells or antigen presenting cells that they're uh, constantly monitoring uh, the body uh, to see if there are any infections or pathogens. If they do encounter any pathogens, then you see those two like receptors and other like DC205 receptors. So those are the different receptors that will recognize the pathogen and it will take in the pathogen and engulf it. When they encounter a pathogen, through those receptors, they will engulf this pathogen and the pathogen will just appear inside. So here, this one is representing a pathogen that you see inside. Uh, uh, this uh, dendritic cells that will be presented to T cells to activate them. As they encounter the pathogen, they become activated and then they will just uh, take the pathogen and break it into small pieces. So those red ones that you see over here represents that one. Those represent tiny bits and pieces of the pathogenic proteins. At the same exact time that they becoming activated and they degrade the proteins of the pathogen, they will also uh, uh, upregulate uh, uh, basically cell surface proteins, receptors like this one over here, uh, and those receptors that are upregulated. More specifically, they are upregulating B7.1, uh, which is also called CD80 and B7.2, which is also called CD86. Uh, They're upregulating those two receptors, and those two receptors are needed in addition to MHC class protein uh, uh, to bind to CD40 on the surface of T cells to activate them. So at the same exact time, you see over here, this red one over here represents the MHC class proteins. So a pathogenic protein will bind to the MHC class protein and then it will be presented to the surface of the uh, cell. Now this activated T cell, <coughs> um, dendritic cell or antigen presenting cell, in this case dendritic cell, albeit macrophage, will take the bit, uh, small pieces of pathogen and bring it, attach it to the MHC class 2 proteins and here. So this is MHC class 2 proteins, this yellow, and this tiny red one that you see over here, this will be the uh, uh, antigen or pathogen over here, a bit of uh, a tiny piece of pathogenic protein uh, which will be presented to the T cells. Now the other thing that you see over here, that the activated T cell uh, also has a receptor of the B7 family, which is also called uh, uh, co-stimulatory uh, uh, receptors. Ac uh, activated dendritic cell also expresses uh, a CCR7 receptor. This CCR7 receptor is a receptor for a chemokine uh, called CCL21. And what is that chemical? That chemical is produced by the secondary lymphoid tissue. So the expression of this one will allow the dendritic cell to enter or migrate toward the secondary dendritic, uh, secondary lymphatic, lymphatic uh, tissue. So it leaves the lymph and it will enter the lymphatic tissue. Uh, the uh, secondary lymphoid tissue, this is the dendritic cells. Right over here, this green one over here uh, represents the B7 family of the receptors, B7.1, B7.2. We said that they're also called CD80, CD81. And this yellow over here that you see represents the uh, uh, MHC class 2 proteins here. And this red one that you see over here, uh, this one represents the pathogen, uh, peptide. So this one, one over here is the MHC2 peptide complex that will be presented to the T cell. And here, so right here, the activated uh, dendritic cells will not, no longer uh, engulf pathogens, but they will be concentrated onto presenting this pathogen to the T cells. 
right over here you have T cells uh, you have the this one over here represents the T cell receptor and you have this one which is CD4 and this one which is CD28 so remember CD28 will need to bind to B7 family of the protein which is the co-stimulator uh, so uh, the activation of T cell requires MHC class 2 protein with the antigen and in addition to that one you require what B7 and B7 will uh, bind to CD48 28 now binding of the dendritic cell to the T cell naive T cell will lead to activation of T cell so now this T cell will become activated uh, one other th the thing that I should mention here that the dendritic cells also uh, produce a chemokin that's called CCL18 and this chemokin specifically attracts the T cells to the dendritic cells so uh, this production of this chemokin will attract the T cells to it, naive T cells uh, differentiation of T cells into different types of T cells uh, depend on the binding of interleukin 2 uh, uh, to the interleukin 2 receptor as you see over here this is the inter uh, this right over here gamma and beta represents the interleukin 2 receptor so when you look at this one this is the receptor right over here and as you see the interleukin will not bind to it effectively uh, let me get a different color over here um, see this one over here is the interleukin 2 and this is the receptor it is not high affinity where this one is representing what uh, activated T cell whereas in when you look at the activated T cell this one over here represents the receptor and this one uh, the next one that you see over here that I'll mark it with yellow this one represents the interleukin 2 so now it has high affinity so the binding of this one will uh, differentiate the T cells to different types of cells in addition to this one the different type of chemokines that are produced by the antigen uh, presenting cells during this interaction will further differentiate the cells into different types <clears throat> if you look at this uh, proteins over here be it CD8 or CD4 uh, their tail is basically within the cytoplasm so this one over here that you see represents the membrane this is inside the T cell and this is outside the T cell and this CD4 or CD8 is located outside the T cell and this region of the CD is located inside the uh, cytoplasm and this region of it is bound to a protein that's called LCK that's a tyrosine kinase protein and now what does this protein do, do when uh, um, um, antigen presenting cells uh, MHC class 2 or MHC class 1 plus the peptide and plus the co-stimulators bind to the T cell receptors this LCK becomes activated and this LCK will activate ZAP70 and this ZAP70 will go to initiate uh, different pathways and it will initiate uh, signaling pathways uh, that you see over here and those signaling pathways will eventually lead to activation of transcription factors and those transcription factors like here is a transcription factor uh, that's a transcription factor so all those transcription that factors are activated uh, those transcription factors will enter the nucleus once inside the nucleus each of those transcription factors will in, uh, uh, express different regions of the DNA and different genes and different genes means different cytokines will be produced by these T cells and the different types of cytokine means like different T, uh, T cells that we're going to look at in a second so now different signals we said will stimulate 
naive cells to produce different types of, uh, to express different genes, and different genes means different cytokines. Now, depending on what cytokines are produced, now we have what? Different types of T cells. T helper 1 cell, T helper 17 cells, the regulatory T helper cells, the uh, fetch T helper cells, and the T helper 2 cells. And then each one of those cells will produce different types of cytokines that we're going to discuss in next video.